This is how I set up a recording studio in a closet for less than $1,000. Complete transparency, I spent about another $300 on software plugins that I use for my music. I'm planning on making another video about my mixing setup, so drop a sub and stay tuned if you're interested. For today, we're going to be going over just essentials for getting some vocal recordings to happen. This is for vocal recording. I'm a rapper. If you're a rapper or a singer, this will be great for you. If you're an instrumentalist of some sort, you might want to find a different tutorial. Final disclaimer, I'm not an expert by any means. This is all just stuff that I've pieced together and figured out on my own, and there are definitely things I could be doing better. I just wanted to share this because it's less than $1,000 and it works to make pretty dope songs like this. So if you're looking for a setup and not necessarily the best setup, this is a good place to start. And if you are an expert, let me know in the comments what you would do differently, and I might not do it because I'm pretty happy with what I've got, but uh, it could be useful for other people and maybe I'll make a follow-up video. First off, I got this computer with Logic Pro. So this is a 2017 used MacBook Pro. I spent three $380.22 on this computer, and I think it's a pretty good deal. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD, and an i7 processor. I'll put more specs on screen for those who are more hardware savvy than me if you're interested. So the reason I got a Mac is because I wanted to use Logic Pro for recording and mixing and mastering. And if you want to use Logic, you pretty much need a Mac unless you're going to hack your way around it. I've always been a Windows guy, so I didn't have any old MacBooks lying around, so I decided to pick one up on Backmarket. Backmarket's a great website for used tech. They're not a sponsor. Nobody's sponsoring this video. These are just the places where I got stuff from, but I also got my phone from there and I'm actually using my phone to record this video right now, so there you go. I went with an old computer, but I still wanted to have good specs, namely 16 gigs of RAM, because sometimes music processing can be pretty intensive, so I wanted to make sure the computer wasn't gonna crap out on me if I put it through a lot of stuff. And so far it's been really great, I haven't had any slowdowns or anything like that whatsoever, and it's a seven-year-old computer, so that's pretty great. If you want to get the same results I did, I'd recommend using my computer's specs as a ballpark, and I'd recommend hunting around on Backmarket and other used tech sites for a while to try to find a really good deal. If you really want to set up your studio for less than a thousand dollars, you're going to want to have time on your side so you can really find the best deals. So that's the most expensive thing I bought, but next up is Logic. Now I know I said I would save software for another video, but I consider Logic to be pretty essential software for what I'm doing, so I'm going to include it here. Now Logic Pro costs two hundred dollars on the App Store, but I did not spend two hundred dollars for it, and I also didn't do anything illegal. How did I do it? So in the end I paid a hundred eighty five dollars and ninety six cents for Logic because I bought discounted Apple gift cards. This is more of a general life hack that I do all the time. If I'm buying something pretty expensive, I'll always look to see if I can find discounted gift cards to the website or the store where I'm buying it from. Personally, I use Raise and Card Cash. Those are pretty good websites for finding discounted gift cards. I've had nothing but good experiences with them. And my girlfriend's recently found Card Cookie. It seems to be one in a similar vein, so I'd recommend checking that out too. So yeah, I bought four $50 Apple gift cards from Card Cash for $48.30 each. And they were also having a Labor Day sale at the time, so I was able to take off another 5% off everything. So I ended up saving almost $15. Pretty good. All right, next up, you need one of these. This is a mic. So I considered a few options for my mic. Now, believe it or not, before I moved into this home studio, I was using a studio at my old school and I was recording with a Shure SM58, which if you know about mics, SM58s are normally what you use for live performances. It's probably what you picture when you picture like a rapper holding a mic on stage. It's not usually used for studio recording, but I kind of liked it and I was using it for a while anyway. And those are pretty cheap. You could use an SM58 to record your vocals. I don't know if I'd recommend it, but I did do it for a while. For my home studio though, I decided to step it up a little bit and I got a Shure SM7B, which is what you see right here. So the SM7B is a great mic. You don't really need a pop filter with it, which is awesome. And you don't really need that much vocal treatment for the room you're in because it's a dynamic mic. So it really doesn't pick up too much background noise, which is great. So I was able to pick up a brand new one on eBay for $232.14, which was way cheaper than I saw the new ones on like other sites. I even saw them go up to like $400. Don't spend that much. I was looking on eBay again before making this video and it looked like there were even some cheaper ones now so definitely look around before you buy one of these. This right here is what it sounds like raw with no effects in it just going into my interface and then going right into the computer and I think it's a pretty good sound. I was also looking into the Neumann TLM 103 which in itself is over a thousand dollars which would break the budget of this entire video. I hear it's a great mic but I decided to go more in the middle ground and honestly I really couldn't be happier with this one. Now I have heard some people point out that this is a quieter mic than many others and so some people will use some extra plugins like a preamp or something like that to make it sound way better. That's going to be on the order of like $150 from the ones I've seen. I don't use one. I think it sounds fine, but if you want to be super professional, you could go that route. Anyway, I recommend the SM7B. It's a great mic. It's used professionally for a lot of
lot of things, and you can get it pretty cheap. This goes without saying for everything on this list, but since we're sort of discount hunting, just be safe and read reviews of wherever you buy the things from. If you see a discount that seems too good to be true, maybe it is, so just make sure you're actually getting what you pay for. Next up, we got this thing, the mic stand. So you're gonna need a mic stand unless you wanna just be holding your mic while you record, which is kinda ridiculous. This is a Pile Pro stand from Amazon. This is about $25, and it's pretty good. This one has a pretty heavy base, which was pretty important to me because this mic is kinda heavy as well, and I didn't want it to be falling over when I leave the studio. And yeah, it's a standard mic stand. I feel like for a mic stand, you don't need to go too extreme. It doesn't affect the quality of your music. It just affects the quality of your life. So get something pretty good and then move on. Next up, we got this interface. This is a Focusrite Scarlett Solo. So if you don't know, the interface is used to plug in your mic and your headphones and then plug that into the computer. I always felt like why not just use a USB mic and you could, but if you're not using an interface for your mic and your headphones, you might get some pretty bad latency. This thing also lets you put some extra gain on the mic and control the headphone volume. So it's pretty good. This is about as basic an interface as you can get, as far as I'm aware. Focusrite also makes the Scarlett 2i2, which has two mic inputs. That might be better if you record with a friend a lot or something like that. I've also heard it's generally better quality overall, but this does the trick for me. I paid $82.63 for it, and looking around, I think you can even get a refurbished one a little bit cheaper, so yeah. Next up, you're gonna need to plug the mic into the interface. So you'll need an XLR cable for that. Now I'm lucky, there's been a bit of music in my family for a while. My dad's played in bands since he was 13. So he had an extra XLR cable lying around that he let me use for my studio. So I didn't pay anything for it. But XLR cables are certainly not the bottleneck price-wise. I found an Amazon Basics one for $9.11. So I'll put that for the price that I spent on it because you might not have one lying around. Another thing that I'm not gonna include in the price because you probably do have something like this lying around, is an adapter for your interface to go into your computer. So the interface connects via USB-A, and the MacBook that I bought only has USB-C ports. So I just have a USB-C to USB-A adapter that I threw in there. If you don't have one, you could add probably another eight bucks to this price to pick one up, but I feel like nowadays people just have adapters like that lying around. Two more things. We got some headphones. The reason you want wired headphones is because wireless headphones have pretty high latency, which can really screw up your recording. So you might already have a good pair of wired headphones, in which case just use that. But I picked up these Audio-Technica ATH-M20X for $51.94. These headphones are okay. They are objectively not the best studio headphones. These are good for really hearing the details and everything, but you could definitely go more expensive if you want to be more precise with your mixing. The reason I didn't splurge is because I do have other sets of wireless headphones that I really like, and I use those for listening to my songs after I've mixed them and making sure they sound good on nice consumer quality headphones. So what I would say is if you don't have other headphones that you like that have good sound quality, probably get something a little better than this. But if you do have other good headphones and you kind of just want something wired to get the job done, I would recommend these. They also come with an adapter here. So regular wired headphones are gonna have the 3.5 millimeter audio jack and the Scarlett accepts the thick audio jack. I think it's an eighth inch or a quarter inch, I forget. And these headphones do come with an adapter for that, so I didn't need to buy it separately. If you want to pay zero dollars for headphones and you have wireless headphones lying around, but not wired ones, you could always just plug in the wireless headphones. For me, I've never had a good experience plugging in either of my wireless headphones. They always get really choppy and grainy and stuff. It just feels like they're not made to be plugged in. So that's why I spent the extra $50 on these, but maybe you'll have better luck. Finally, why am I in a closet? So I'm in a closet because it just sounds the best. So before I started buying anything for the studio, I was kind of like paralyzed by too many options for like soundproofing and vocal treatment and vocal isolation and all these things. But then I found that my girlfriend has a lot of clothes and clothes are really good at stopping sound from bouncing around the walls too much. There's just kind of a lot of stuff in this closet to catch sound waves. So if you have a walk-in closet like this one and you don't want to spend a lot of money on proper sound treatment, just use clothes. Zero dollars. Plus, this mic doesn't pick up too much background noise anyway, so with the combination of this mic, these clothes, and just this room in general, it's a pretty good sound. Once again, I'm not an expert. This is just what I do. If you do something different, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if this helped you at all, and if you have any tips for where to find things cheaper for maybe other people who are scrolling in the comments. And that's about it. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.